Meeting of Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. Uh, at this time, I'm going to call upon everyone so we can stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask that you all remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of our soldiers, past and present. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded by Dartmouth Community TV. Also, I'd like to announce that our next regular scheduled meeting is on August 7th of 2024, here in room 304 of the town office. Moving on to the public hearings portion of tonight's meeting. The first matter we have on the agenda is variance ZAV 24-5. The petitioner applicant is Dartmouth Fire District 1. The subject property is 10 Bridge Street, also known as Map 117, Lot 110. And it's located in the General Residence District. Gentlemen, if you remember, we actually opened this case mm -hmm. and we had to continue it because the petitioner had to amend their request. And as a result, tonight, they've submitted a letter to their representative that they'd like to withdraw uh, ZAV 24-5. I'm gonna read it into the letter. It's addressed to the zoning board. It's dated July 16th, and it's signed by Nathaniel Ginsburg. And it says, Dear Ms. Vieira, please accept this letter as our formal request to withdraw variance case ZAV 24-5 without prejudice so that our new application for the Dartmouth Fire District 1 renovation addition project may proceed at the July 24th, 2024 hearing. As you can see, gentlemen, on the agenda, we have a, uh, an application for a special permit and also for a variance for the very same project. So uh, at this point, if, unless there's any comments or any questions of the petition, no. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I make a motion that we accept the request to withdraw without prejudice uh, for case variance ZAV 24-5. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. So we've taken care of that matter. So we've got two companion cases tonight. Um, I will read them both first. We'll open them both up and then we can decide them individually. Mm -hmm. The first matter we have on is special permit ZSP 24-12. The applicant petitioner is Dartmouth Fire District 1. The representative is Brewster Thornton Group Architects. The subject property is 10 Bridge Street, map 117, lot 170. The property is located in the general residence district and the case was legally advertised on July 4th and July 11th. I make a motion that we waive the reading of the abutters list. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. On this particular case, the petitioner is seeking a special permit to increase the nonconformity of the lot coverage from 88% to 91%. Mm. I'm going to read on and open the next case. Variance case is ZAV 24-12. The petitioner is also Dartmouth Fire District, same parcel. And there were notifications on this case as well that were published on July 4th and July 11th. Uh, I make a motion that we waive the reading of the abutters list again. For Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. In this case, the petitioner is seeking a variance for renovations and an addition for an existing fire station, excuse me, to an existing fire station, to 10.9 feet encroaching on the required 20-foot street setback. So let me see if there are any comments. Well, let me read the denial letter first. <coughs> this letter is dated June 14th, 2024, addressed to Christine Shea uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. I believe that's a representative of the petitioner. And it indicates that, and it's from the building department, and it says, I have reviewed your application, and at this time, your proposal cannot be approved due to noncompliance with current zoning regulations. Proposed renovations and addition to an existing fire station to 10.9, encroaching on the 20-foot required street setback mm -hmm. per 375-10.4-D1A variance required. Also, the proposed renovations increase the nonconformity of the lot from 88% to 91% per 375-10.4F 10 .4 special permit required. 
Your application is being denied on the following sections of the zoning bylaw. And it's 375-10.4. The purpose of a lot setback requirement is to lessen congestion and overcrowding of lots to provide access within the lot for general circulation and maintenance of the buildings located thereon. To provide access in the case of fire and to lessen congestion and promote safety in adjacent streets. Minimum setback dimensions. Any building or structure placed on a lot, with, whether temporary or permanent, shall meet the following minimum setback requirements. And in this particular case, the setback requirements are 20 feet. And then there's also the development standard. It has to do with the um, permeable, impermeable surface. And it says it's, it's within the percentage of lot coverage. In the general residence district, all uses on a lot, which include but are not limited to building structures, driveways, parking areas, gravel areas, walks, patio storage areas, imper impermeable surfaces, etc., shall not cover more than 50% of the lot. Natural areas such as landscaping, gardens, lawns, etc., are not regulated within the 50% requirement. And it goes on to say the subject property is located in the general residence district. So that's the letter we have there, and we have some comments. That was from the building department. We've got some comments. We've got a comment from uh, the planning department. It says that site plan review is required, which I'm sure the petitioner is aware of. And DPW says compliance with the following DPW regulations, rules, and specifications will be required, but not limited to the following. Department of Public Works construction specifications and standard details, latest revision, general bylaw chapter 13, 313, stormwater management, stormwater management regulations, rules and regulations for the installation and connection of building sewers and for the use of public sewers, and site plan sh shall show all existing utilities. All right, so at this point in time, if there are no questions, I'm gonna call upon the petitioner's representative so they can uh, state their case. Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, board, uh, good evening, first of all. And for the record, my name's Joe Casali. I'm a registered professional engineer with offices at 300 Post Road in Warwick, Rhode Island. With me is Nate Ginsberg, who's a principal architect with the firm Bruce the Thornton Group Architects out of Providence, Rhode Island. And now uh, the fire chief is also here with us. Um, as you said, Mr. Chairman, we're here for two issues, uh, both expansion on non-conforming, existing non-conforming conditions. If I may, I have a quick PowerPoint presentation um, just to highlight uh, the two requests we're asking for. Uh, you all know uh, better than I where the subject parcel is in terms of the, uh, of the community, Bridge Street, Cleveland, and the aforementioned parcel, specifically Assessor's Plat 117, Lot 170. It's a small piece, only about 24,000 square feet, just larger than a half, half of an acre. Um, as you stated, Mr. Chairman, all of the subject parcel and surrounding um, parcels are in the general residence zone. There is some more, um, some limited uh, business uh, up near the uh, waterfront. Um, what will, uh, the parcel does touch the flood zone in the southernmost corner. Um, all of the construction will be out and away from the, uh, out and away from the flood zone. Um, our proposal is to the existing garage is going to remain um, and the offices are going to be raised and um, replaced. You can see the existing offices now are uh, legal non-conforming, uh, 20 foot front yard set back from Cleveland Street, we're approximately 18.7, um, and the lot uh, right now is about 88%. Um, impervious, which is about 21,400 square feet. Our proposal is um, a two-story building addition just shy of 2,700 square feet. Uh, you can see much needed program, um, uh, that's the basement, just some electrical storage, uh, mechanical. Um, but in the first floor with the training, um, kitchen, um, different dispatch um, and uh, ready room, watch room, uh, some offices, and then up top, uh, bunks, day rooms, uh, and baths, and, and some study areas. Um, you can see the north elevation of, of what you see, very tasteful within the existing um, architectural um, condition that's out there. Um, that's from Cleveland Street, the subject of variance, um, Bridge Street, um, and then uh, that's into the existing building. So again, um, we're here on two matters, Mr. Chairman. First, the dimensional relief um, for hat to uh, re respectfully request that you allow the building 10.9 feet um, from the front yard setback, uh, front yard property line, which is um, 9.1 feet of relief. Um, and then also 
um, in terms of the lot coverage, we're adding about 729 square feet of impervious lot area. So we're increasing uh, the lot coverage from the 88% to the uh, 91. As you know, 50% is the uh, maximum in this zone. Um, I'm not sure if there are any questions, but I would be happy to answer them. Um, architecturally, Mr. Ginsburg is here, and of course, uh, the chief is with us as well. I don't have any questions at this time, but I'm gonna call upon any of my fellow members here. You guys have any questions? I have no questions. I have no questions. Gentlemen? I have none. All right, so this is a public hearing, as you well know. Um, so every, I've got some people here in the audience. Is there anyone here that would like to speak in either in favor or in opposition to this petition? Absolutely, you can come up. You have to identify yourself. I'm sorry, though. For the record, you have to identify yourself, um, name and address, and then you can ask your question. If we can't answer it, then we'll defer to the representative. Um, Lee Brownell Currens. We live at 329 <laughs> Elm Street, so we back up to the fire station. Um, the first question that I, we had was in regards to moving the... Um, the filling station, the gasoline filling area, which is currently against the back of the building, it's now going to be backing up to the residential yard. Um, and we know that th there's lots of plans of what's going to do underground, but um, I just was wondering what the safety regulations are in terms of being that close to um, a private property. Um, in case of spill or fire. You know, so we, kn we know that they're gonna put it out because they're right there, but what, what's the thinking on that? That is not specifically within our purview because we're zoning, but obviously it's a concern. We do have their representative, so I'm gonna call upon their representative. We also have the fire chief here mm -hmm. today as well, but I will call upon their representative if he has any questions and maybe they can elaborate as to what their plan is, if they actually are moving it, where they're moving it to, and whatnot. Um, okay, and then I'll have another question. Oh, it might go to the building. Let's start the next question. Okay, the next question in regards to the plans that was showing the lighting on the back corner, the closest to our property, it looks like a pretty big floodlight so they can illuminate when they need to fill the, gas, the trucks with the gas. Um, and we're, we'd, we'd like to know what the plan is from a lighting pollution standpoint. The, we have two bedrooms that that will be coming shining into, and hopefully there are plans being made that they can only turn it on when needed, um, and that any angling of the, the shade or the lighting could take into consideration um, guests and family um, being able to sleep at night. So that's it. Let's see what they have to say. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for asking those questions and the opportunity to address both of those. You just need to identify yourself. If yep, you could. my name is Nate Ginsberg. I'm uh, the architect for the project from Brewster Thornton Group, and uh, Joe Casale from Joe Casale Engineering. So, on the uh, let me take the lighting first. So, we we are required to keep all of the light with on on the site. We will be providing full cutoff fixtures, which don't allow uh, light to spread beyond the site. The light at the fueling station will be used only for fueling when that, when that is in use. Um, and in general, lo there are low light levels uh, programmed for around the building, because we know so, it's a residential so that, neighborhood. That one in the corner? Sorry, you have to come up. <laughs> Otherwise, we don't get it on the record, and then we, it becomes problematic. You can come up. So would... Would that corner light be on all the time at night? No. Okay. So the, we have uh, multiple light levels designed around the building, and the, the lights that are designed to stay on are very low, that light the doors of the building. Uh, on at a lower tier. At a lower tier at a residential gotcha. level. The mm -hmm. ones that are up high at a higher level are only on when they're needed and in use. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, for, the, for the fuel, we actually have... Uh, move the, the tank from where it is next to the building into the corner. There is a five foot concrete retaining wall and then there's a, a fence above that. So it's moved from that spot down into the lower uh, left in the corner. So 
it will be the, the fueling tank will actually be lower and, and be concealed behind the, the fence and the um, the concrete wall. There are two fuel spill containment pads, one where the truck is when it's filling, and then the other one underneath the pad itself. Those are designed for uh, a moderate level of uh, fuel spillage to be contained within the pad and then evaporate. Uh, for a larger spill, there is a, um, a catch basin prior to the, the sewer that takes drainage from the general lot. If there is a spill, there is a, a key and a lever so that that catch basin can be cut off and nothing will get into the, uh, to the drainage stream. Uh, and those will all be contained. The, the fuel tank itself is a double tank. So if the inside tank ruptured, there is an outside tank. So there's multiple redundancies. Yeah. Thank you. Is that a buried tank? It is not. It's an above ground it's tank. Above ground. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Yes. All right. Not to say you like the answers, but that it did. No, no, no. All right. That was very thorough. Okay. All right. Um, are there any follow up questions on anything? No, I have none. All right. um, <clears throat> I, I think it'd be appropriate if we we're going to consider this um, to, if there were going to be a condition, there would be some condition about lighting, that the lighting would be uh, proposed in a manner that it would be limiting to surrounding neighbors. And that you know any lighting for the fuel area would only be operable during the fueling time. Uh, Mr. Chair, they submitted a lighting photometric site plan too, with the, and they show zero. Uh, I believe at the property line, it's, it's, uh, they don't show any. Uh, we do. We we have a photometric plan within the package. We're less than a half a foot candle all around the property lines. Um, you know. It's great with today's technology. We now have Doc Sky compliant with LED lighting with almost everything. The days of the halogen lighting and the, the you know they're uh, they're going by. So you won't see those large spotlights. Um, you'll just see directional Doc Sky LED lights, and they certainly can be motion detected and utilized um, just when uh, just when we're fueling. Okay. Oh, we can discuss that as well. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak either in favor or in objection to an opposition to this uh, request petition? Well, I can review, I can report to our viewers at home, we have at least 25, 30 people here today and we've only had one person who had some comments and they were valid. Um, so at this point in time, I'm gonna leave the public portion of both hearings open um, so we can go through some findings. Have you proposed? Excuse me? Yeah. Both of them, yes. The variance one first. Okay. Yeah, I'm not taking them out of order. We'll do the variance one first if sure. that's okay with you guys. Yeah. Again, these are just some suggested suggestions. I'm open to any comments that you guys may have. All right, so the subject property is located at 10 Bridge Street and is in a general residence zoning district, district and is also known as map 117, lot 170 on Dartmouth Assessor's map. The subject property is improved with a commercial building that has been owned by the Dartmouth Fire District 1 since 1972. If that's incorrect, let me know. Town of Dartmouth Zoning Bylaw, Article 10, Section 375-10.4 D1, the minimum setback dimensions allows any building or structure placed on a lot, whether temporary or permanent, shall meet the following minimum setback requirements. A 20-foot minimum setback from street, from street right-of-way lines or vehicular easement lines. The Zoning Enforcement Office has determined that the lot was in existence prior to 1993 and there's evidence to support the building was constructed in 1950. And the petitioner seeks to renovate and construct an addition to the existing fire station, a distance of 10.9 feet from the street line, encroaching on the required 20 foot street line setback. Petitioner seeks relief from the street line setback. And the board finds that the petitioners have met the statutory requirements of Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 10. Now we've got the four point. Uh, I look, didn't look at the height. I'm assuming the height will be in compliance with the required. Okay, if you want to just add to the, yes. we add that to the uh, finding then. Proposed structure would meet the required height requirements in the general resident in the uh, will meet
All right. So the first prong is there are, subs there are circumstances related to soils, shape, and topography that especially affect the subject property that do not generally affect the zoning district in which the structure or land is located. Now, I've, I've, I found this. I don't know. I did this a few weeks ago, um, just putting some of this together. 1950. Does that sound right that the building was 1950? I got the, the fire chief saying no. So when was the building constructed? 77. 1977? Okay. So let's change that. Change it also in the, uh, the other one, nineteen seventy-seven. Yeah. Uh -huh. The existing commercial building, which was built in nineteen seventy-seven, is presently set back twenty feet from the street line. Petitioners seek to construct an addition to the fire station by ten point nine feet to serve the department's space needs for the betterment of its services to town residents. Second prong, a literal enforcement of the provisions of the bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner. The proposed addition to the fire station being 10.9 feet from the street line is conducive to the fire department's use of the remaining parcel and its ability to properly serve the town. Conformance with required zoning would limit the fire department's ability to serve the fire protection's needs, the fire protection needs of the community. Third, desirable relief may be granted without detriment to the public good. The current front setback for the existing commercial building is 20 feet from the street line. The proposed addition will be 10.9 feet thereby maintaining a similar look and in keeping with other structures in the neighborhood. And subpart mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. the purpose of the setback bylaw is to ensure a distance between structure and street lines. There are adjoining properties with structures closer to lot lines than the proposed 10.9 feet for the approved addition. Therefore, the granting of this variance will not nullify or substantially derogate from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, just when, in the findings, did you want to add that the existing building is a non-conforming? Yes, we can do that. To the, to the setback yes. currently, so it's, a pre it's not, it's a, yes, yeah, so. That number seven. The existing building is pre-existing and non-conforming the front the current mm -hmm. setback requirements. Mm -hmm. How's that? Sure. Is, is, is fact number two correct, Mr. Chairman? Um, no, it should be 77. You mean about the ownership? Yeah. You want to just say the town? No, no, no. I meant uh, you had 72 in there. All right, so we got 72, 77. We rectified that Sorry, as well. We did buy the property. In 72. Property services improve for the commercial building has been owned by. Oh, so, so, oh, so seven. it was improved in '77. So we'll leave it at '77. Thank you, though, for the clarification. I'm supposed to make you go up. I made her go up. I'm supposed to make you go up. <laughs> identify yourself, and then you can speak. We'll just say it was a fire chief for the record, okay? All right. Um, the conditions are the petitioner will secure all the necessary permits and approvals from applicable boards and agencies and all conditions associated with previous variance, which they don't have here. Now, <clears throat> gentlemen, I did raise a concern uh, just because a neighbor, and, and I can understand that things are said here. Uh, we always want them to be followed through, but I don't have an engineering background. I don't know. Lighting is, over the last 20 years, lighting has changed. And... We don't want spillage going on to people's properties as far as, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning and they're trying to go to bed and uh, there's light in their backyard as if it's, you know, a festival going on. Um, I'm hoping that this lighting requirement that you've indicated, can you explain that a little further? Sure, but if you feel better, I, I think, I don't think it hurts that to add a condition that they have to comply with what they submitted, so which, uh, right. and, and that, the zoning, and with the, with the town of... But they also have to go I before guess. planning board, and planning board will put limitations on what you guys can do with that, correct? Yeah, and we'll, we would be happy to stipulate to be in compliance with the photometric plan we submitted, mm -hmm. um, which is in compliance, compliance. with town ordinance. I yeah. agree. Uh, and I, I noticed, Mr. Chair, just, just this is more like an administrative uh, uh, thing because I think I, I might have, Mr. Caselli, uh, I think I might have mentioned last time on the site plan because you have a dimension to the property line. If you can add the surveyor's stamp on that sheet, sheet number, we don't, we don't want you to come back 
here for that, but <laughs> yeah. What we did was we added the dimension to the surveyor's sheet. Oh, okay, I, I didn't, okay. On the Rather existing than, conditions? Yes, well, and then he put the proposed um, uh, dimension on there. He felt more comfortable stamping his plan um, than putting uh, his survey stamp on. On, on your own. plan? Yeah. Okay. I... So the revised survey plan that uh, we submitted, uh, Brad Tavares is our Commonwealth. The... Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're good. Thank you. So just yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. So we're not going to close the public hearing on this yet. I'm going to move on to the next one. The special permit. Special permit. Yeah. There's a lot of redundant language, so I ask you to bear with me. Thank you. All right, the subject property is located at 10 Bridge Street and is in a general residence zoning district and is also known as Map 117, Lot 170 on Dartmouth Assessors Map. The subject property is improved with a commercial building and has been owned by the Dartmouth Fire Department since 1977. Mm -hmm. um, the petitioner seek relief, petitioner seeks relief from Dartmouth Zoning Bylaw Article 10, Section 375-10.4F, Development Standards Percentage of Lot Coverage, in general residence district, all uses on a lot which include but are not limited to building structures, driveways, parking areas, gravel areas, walks, patios, storage areas, impermeable surfaces, etc., shall not cover more than 50% of the lot. Natural areas such as landscaping, gardens, lawns, etc., are not regulated within the 50% requirement. The petitioners seek to renovate and construct an addition to the existing fire station, a distance of 10.9 feet from the street line, encroaching on a 20-foot street line setback. Petitioners seek relief to, from lot coverage, wherein the proposed renovations will increase the nonconformity of lot coverage from 88% to 91%. Mm -hmm. The board finds that the increase in lot coverage will not be detrimental to the neighborhood and is in general harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. I'm open to any comments, gentlemen. Uh, that's a very modest increase. In it. Sure. Yeah. Gentlemen? All right, so we've already allowed people to speak on this, and they had one concern. We. I believe that we're addressing it because it's already in there. Um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing on one of the cases, or if you want to do both at once, we can do that as well. Let's do one at a time. I want to entertain a motion to close the public hearing on the variance case. Are oh, you looking to me? I make a motion that we close the public hearing on variance case ZAV-24-12. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, you guys want to finalize this one, or do you want me to also close the public hearing on the next one? We can finalize this one and finalize close one. it and then okay. close the we'll, hearing we'll on close it. this one. So, gentlemen, um, are there any additional comments that, or any statements that anyone wants to make with regard to this before we, uh, we put it forth for a vote? No. I have nothing to add. All right, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I make a motion that we close the public hearing first, right? We, we did that. For, we already did. We just well, did yes, we did. Okay. We're doing them separate. I don't yes. think I'll do it. I think second one. Okay. That way. All right. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I make a motion that we approve variance case ZAV-24-12 for 10 Bridge Street, Dartmouth, Mass. With the state. As, as stated, as written, and uh, on the, using as, based on the conditions previously stated. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. That's that one. Yeah, now we close. All right, the public now hearing. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing on the special permit case. I make a motion that we close the public hearing on special permit case 24 12. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. Now, is, are there any additional comments or any discussion we need to have with regard to this one, gentlemen? No, Mr. Chair. No, Chair. no Chair. nothing to add. None. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve special permit case 24-12 for 10 Bridge Street, Dartmouth, with the findings and conditions previously stated. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations. All right, um, moving on. The next matter we have. Oh, that's this and this. 
is a use variance for ZAV 24-12. No, no, no. Wait a sec. How does this have the same number? No, no. It's not a variance, it's just a variance. And you got 24-12 here too, it's not, it's not correct. Let's see. It's 24-10. It is 10. Smithy Bosch But I got two numbers on oh, that ZSP. That's ZSP. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's, it's confusing. Yeah. I, I, I did, did I need to change those. Didn't okay. I like them? Maybe I didn't like them All right, so it's variance case ZAV 24-10. The petitioner is Peter Bullard, Esquire. The owner of the property is Raymond Rose Sr. Trustee. The subject property is located at 411 Fonts Corner Road, also known as Map 63, Lot 12. The property is located in the Limited Industrial District. The case was legally advertised on July 4th and July 11th. To make a motion that we waive the reading of the abutters. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. In this case, the petitioner is seeking a use variance to construct a 39,057 plus or minus square foot car dealership. Let's see what we got here for comments. Well, let's start first with the denial letter. This is from the building inspector. It's, it was dated May 14th of this year to address the Peter Bullard. It's regarding 411 Fonts Corner Road. It says, I have reviewed your application, and at this time, your proposal cannot be approved due to noncompliance with current zoning regulations. The construction of a 39,057 square foot plus or minus car dealership. The design of the parking lot does not meet setbacks, number of spaces required, or size of spaces required per 375-24.3. The total lot coverage is not specified and may require zoning relief. Variances... Variance is required for proposed project. Your application is being denied under the following section of the Dartmouth Zoning Bylaw, 375-21.4C Development Standards. All uses on a lot, which include but not limited to buildings, driveways, parking areas, storage areas, impermeable surfaces, etc., shall not cover more than 65% of the entire lot. Landscaped areas are not included. Parking facility setbacks. Parking facilities shall meet the following setback, minimum setbacks. 40 feet from street, 30 feet to property line, 15 feet from building, 375-24.3 off-street parking regulations, one per 150 square foot of GFA, and parking facility design standards. The subject property is located in a limited industrial district. So that's that. Now, what about the comments from the other boards? We have that. You have one? Thank you. From the planning board, the planning board site plan review is required if this variance is approved, which I'm sure you're well aware, mm -hmm. Attorney Bullard. Board of Health, if the board considers approval of the variance, please consider placing a condition upon the approval for some above ground stormwater control. This location is within the impaired watershed to the Slocums River an impervious area as previously noted to the board in the application for 1402 Tucker Road. Is a, in the application for 14 Tucker Road is a primary contributor of nitrogen to the Slocums River. Who's the relevance of 1402? I believe this is a typo, but maybe we'll, 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 we'll be able to solicit something further as it goes along. This was a note from Christopher Michaud. Conservation, as has been discussed, at least two previous technical reviewers meetings, the western third of the site is bisected from north to south by a stream slash wetland corridor in the center wetlands may encroach onto the site from the south and the eastern portion of the site supports wetlands and designated endangered species habitat. No permit applications under wetland jurisdiction have been filed to date and I would say that there are conservation and stormwater issues related to this site. So you've got some conservation issues to be contending with. DPW, compliance with the following DPW regulations, rules and specifications will be required but not limited to the following. Department of Public Works construction specifications and standard details, general bylaw chapter 313, 
stormwater management, stormwater management regulations, rules and regulations for the installation and connection of building sewers and for the use of public sewers. So those are the comments that we have so far. Um, so at this time, I'm going to call upon the petitioner's representative, who we know who's, who's been before us, Mr. and Attorney Peter Bullock. Uh, Good Mr. evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, my name is Peter Bullard uh, with an office, law office in, uh, at 115 Orchard Street in New Bedford. <clears throat> if somebody's been arrested, please go somewhere else. Um, <laughs> um, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Michelle. Uh, this is uh, not my first rodeo, but she always manages to teach me something. So thank you, Michelle. Um, so I, I'm here on behalf of my client, PRM Holdings. I'd like to just a brief, brief overview. Um, as you've read into the record, uh, the proposal is a new car dealership, uh, Audi VW car dealership, about 35,000 square feet. I think it's uh, important uh, for the record to uh, uh, touch base on the process. Uh, my clients have touched base with the neighbors. Uh, my clients have tried to be very, very transparent with their intentions. Uh, they've also tried to work very, very closely with the town and the town department heads. At <clears throat> I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm older than dirt, but um, I think this technical review concept is a great concept. I don't, I don't know who um, uh, came up with it, uh, but I don't remember it happening back in the day, uh, but my clients have met twice with department heads, uh, you know, planning board, fire chiefs, police chiefs, and to get feedback. And <clears throat> they've been guided, and that, that process has, in my opinion, been very, very constructive. Um, so my clients have been uh, uh, working hard to work with the town. Uh, the de denial letter uh, speaks for itself. It does mention that we need a use variance, um, and it cites two uh, zoning provisions, 375-212, uh, limited industrial district, uh, which spells out uh, kind of what you can do in that zoning district. A car dealership is not listed as an allowed use. Uh, manufacturing and agricultural uses are emphasized, um, uh, but they're really not, in my humble opinion, uh, practical in that area, uh, given its uh, small dimension on Fawns Corner Road uh, and the prevalence of wetlands. I think you read something into the record from conservation, uh, and that the site is uh, e extremely long and narrow, and it's bifurcated by wetlands in two different places. Uh, and the proposal is to completely avoid the wetlands. My clients have worked very, very hard to, um, uh, to not encroach on any wetlands. Uh, 375.43.3 uh, says that the ZBA uh, can grant a use variance if, uh, uh, if they uh, determine that the site can't reasonably be used for the allowed uses. And um, I think uh, we all love farms and stuff, but when you get farms involved with wetlands, it can be a little problematic today uh, for all sorts of reasons. So just for clarification, you're actually you're seeking a use variance here. Well, the the there, I thought there is a pre-existing non-conforming use that's not been abandoned as of yet. That's right. Well, so that's that's what I thought, and I cited in in the petition. I, I referred to. Mr. Braga's opinion that um, we were grandfathered for, for a period of time, and I think technically, uh, according to Mr. Braga, who's, who's here this evening, um, which is above and beyond the call of duty, so thank you, Mr. Braga. Um, we have until the end of the calendar year to you know break ground, but um, the denial letter dated June 18th specifically references um, a use variance. And so uh, I was going to address that. And that was from our, our current building inspector, yes. correct? It just says a variance. So your application only asked for a variance. I was thinking that given the way I had read this uh, up until recently was that you're looking for uh, dimensional variance or variation from requirements for parking and whatnot from us. But I, I didn't, and I, I figured that your use situation was uh, 
was still still, yeah. still valid where you wouldn't require a use variance. So I'm not, I haven't considered this as a use variance up until this very moment. Right. Um, well, it, as you know, the uh, use of the site historically has been for used cars. There's been a car dealership there for a long, long time. Um, and so um, it was Mr. Braga's opinion that uh, we had a, a, a grandfathered period of time that, that expires at the end of this calendar year. But I'm, I'm, I think I'm limited by the four corners of the denial letter, and the denial letter is mentioning that there's use variance, and I think we could obtain a use variance because I think it's reasonable for the, the ZBA to conclude that uh, the allowed uses really don't fit this particular site, and that the proposed plan is a perfect use for the site. I mean, Fonts Corner Road is a very commercialized area, and as you've mentioned, given the history of this site with a car dealership, it's reasonable to assume that this site could have its... What about the argument, I don't mean to cut you off, but what about the argument of the fact that all this is is, in essence, an expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming right. use, and no, therefore special, a special permit. permit and not a variance? Absolutely. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd love that, but I don't, I don't want to... Uh, on a good day, I, I know a little bit of law. I'm, I'm not the zoning enforcement officer, and, and, uh, and actually, I think it was Mr. Braga who came up with the concept of the denial letter, which I think is a great idea, okay? Um, and so when we adopted the whole concept of the denial letter, I look at the denial letter, and I'm thinking to myself, I have to address the issues raised in that denial letter. Now, I'd love to proceed just with a special permit. That would be great because as you, as you well know, uh, still Mr. Chairman. still need a Chair. variance for the other issues. Right, but. And that's the other thing. I, when I was preparing for this, it wasn't clear to me exactly what the variances were. They were general, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't have a comparison to what the bylaw allows and what you're seeking on a line, as a line-by-line -line item. Right. So quite frankly, M Mr. Uh, Attorney Bullard, I'm going to ask that you put that together for, for me or for us specifically so that we can specifically list the, the variances that you're seeking for each of the cons, each of the issues that you're confronted with, right? And and Casey Birch is here, who's the site manager. And uh, for instance, on the denial letter, it references um, we need relief uh, for 40 feet from the from the uh, street frontage. He's itemized all those things, and he can read those into the record for you today if you'd like, or maybe you want it in writing. I'd, I'd rather have it in writing yeah. so I can have an opportunity yeah. to put forth a, a, yeah. a suggested or uh, some findings that my board could review that were substantive. Yeah. You, know, you understand? Yes. Okay. So we, we have addressed each one of his um, itemized uh, relief points. And we can get that to you in writing, point by point, as to where, what we're proposing versus what the standard is. That would be good. And if you could put it to me in Word version, that'd be great. So that way I could just cut and paste it yep. if I needed to. Yeah, no um, worries. Because I just don't feel comfortable because it's so general at this point. And the plan that I was provided, I didn't have one of these larger plans. Yep. It was difficult to read for me to yep. And I can't yep. decipher. So if I can have specific... And if they match up to what the denial letter is, that'll be good. Maybe there may be a couple extra things. Here's but what was petitioned for in the application? Variance. Uh, use variance. variance. But it was a use variance? No, well, it was, yeah, I think it was two. I think it was a use variance and all sorts of relief from setbacks and. In your application, it was a variance. Use variance, right? No, a variance. Oh, just a variance? Yeah. I was just looking for I, oh. That was a scrivener's error by you putting use in there. So that was an error. And I had sent you the. Right. Oh, okay. So that's even better. So it's a variance. Yeah, but it doesn't have any changes. But the problem is, it doesn't have. The only thing that refers to here is that he's seeking a variance from the use, but there's nothing about the dimensional requirements in this variance. In the application. In the, it's not in there. I don't see it in the application. This is what kind of threw me what off. What was advertised? A use variance, but that was an error. It should have just been variance. Well, then if it, it was advertised as use variance, Mm -hmm. No, yes, so maybe it was, but it, he's asking for a use variance. When you look at this, it's just a use variance. It doesn't have, if you look at what's been applied for here, unless something else was advertised, I don't know. No. If I, where's the, where's the legal ad on this? Right All right, so I'm going to read it into the record, gentlemen. Is seeking a use variance to construct mm -hmm. a 39,057 square foot car dealership in the limited industrial district in which, which does not comply with the town zoning bylaws 
as the design of the parking lot does not meet setback requirements, number of spaces required, or size of spaces. Uh, parking, I think, is planning board anyways, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, unless you're seeking for a variation from it, right? But there's I some. Think we don't. I think it's the. If there's plantings or planters or things of that nature. It's before us as well. Well, I gotta double check on that. I think the planning board gives the waivers on the parking, if I'm not mistaken. So, All right, so, so it's not a variance from the zoning board of appeal. I think, Attorney Bullard, I think your is your engineer here tonight. Yes. Okay, Mr. Sc is it? Uh, uh, Casey Birch is here. Okay, uh, I have a question. Yeah, Casey can come up. I have a legal question. Oh, if you don't know, no, no. continue with that. It's just going to be with Sorry. I want to come back to you, though. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll hear from the, from the uh, Casey, Maybe step up to you. Sure. Um, for the record, my name is Casey Birch. I work for Soli Engineering, uh, address at 11 Vanderbilt uh, Avenue in Norwood, Mass. Okay. Uh, well, my question is, was the wetland delineated? Do you have, uh, you showed the wetland edge. Was that from aerial mapping or this was actually from a uh, wetland delineation from biologists? Or? Yes, it, it was delineated by Goddard Consultants and the brook was also delineated. Okay, that's what I, okay. Because I wasn't, there was a reference to the brook. So the brook is there. So your, your buffers are correct. That's and correct. this is based on instrumental surveys and all that. Okay. Because if, if it wasn't, it would change. Then you come back here. We can't. Right. We can't act on. Where's the brook? The brook is right here. I just saw the brook right now. Just the stream. How are they going to oh. be able to access from one what? area to this what area? What they're going from this from this lot? CP two point one. Let's see. Um, and I, I don't, did you, have you filed with conservation yet? Anything, uh, what, Lindy? We, we have not. We figured we'd go through this process to get the um, relief first, because okay. if we can't get it, then it's kind of pointless. Okay. Well, I'm still not certain exactly what relief we have here. So um, just so that I get a sense of what the, not that it has com and complete relevance to this, but I just want to know what is what his thought process was. I'm going to call upon Mr. Braga to come forward and explain to us how it is that he arrived at his understanding. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Joe Braga, um, 58 Seabreeze Drive, uh, Dartmouth, Mass. Um, when I first worked with Danny on this, on this proposal, we looked at that lot and there was already a um, car dealership on it. The license expired in December of 22, which means there's two years, which would be at the end of this December. A use variance would not be needed because of the use is still is active at this time. Secondly, once the variance is approved for the petitioner, then they have the 18 months, the initial 12, 12 months for the variance, and that they need an extension of six months. If they didn't exercise that variance in that amount of time, then, you, then the um, used to be completely gone and it couldn't be revisited again. Um, as far as um, the parking, the parking relief all comes under the purview of the planning board. It has, through site plan review, size of, whether it's the size of the parking spaces or uh, they don't have enough parking. And that's per Article um, 24.3b, which talks about special permit reduction and required number of spaces both the planning board approves that. So they wouldn't need a, technically they wouldn't need a variance for the parking either. The only thing they would need relief from right now would be the setback dimensions okay. for the parking lot. That would be it. Everything else, that would go through site plan review. The use variance is, that, have, that was not advertised correctly in my opinion, because the use is still active. It's only July, and they would have until December. So if they get the variance in that amount of time, then that use remains protected. Yep. And that was my opinion from the start of this project. That's okay. Mr. Chair, for a minute. Sorry. Yes. Uh, you can ask. For Absolutely, ask. Uh, so I think it would be more appropriate if he wants to continue with this to ask for a special permit for the increase of the non conforming use for the, for the car dealership and the setback for the, for the building, right? Absolutely. That, that would Other be. Than the, yeah, I would, I would that go would that. buy him another two years too. Because so, everything, everything could go through, technically everything could go through special permit for the ex extension and then also for the parking, for the reduction in parking and for the size of the spaces. Would all be special permit, that would go through the planning board. And the ZBA could take care of the other part, of the, the expansion of the nonconformity. Right. 
all through special permit, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't require a variance. Not until after December 20. This, 20 that's right. Right. Up until up until this this the end of this year, it would be a special permit for an expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming. Right. What as, I was long as, as long as as long as that's is, approved, as long as that's approved, they're going through yeah, this I, process. That use remains protected throughout the whole procedural process. So if you if you approve all this gets approved in November, then that use is protected yes. until for that two-year period, one year or two-year period, whatever the, the board votes on. And me meanwhile, can they go to the select board and get the license? Uh, renewed. Renewed for another two, is that a process or do you don't think, I mean, Mr. They would have to actually be an ownership of, the, of it and, and apply for the, for the dealership license. They probably could. They would have to select, you know, check with Melanie on that. I'm not sure of that. But as long as this, as long as they're going through the proceedings, and they're in the process of this, the use remains protected under the state statute and the local statute for that use. All right. Now, the thing is, is obviously, um, people can have different of opinions in yes. the interpretation of these things. I could get three more lawyers in this room, and all three of them disagree with me. Um, and I, I tend to think and agree with you, but it doesn't mean that our building inspector is wrong in his interpretation of this. He may just have a more, a more restrictive type interpretation than what I may be willing to take. I, and and I, I, Attorney Human may have a different interpretation than what I have. But I, the way I feel about it, and I'd like to make sure that we sort of get a sense of our members here, because I don't want to send this petitioner to go do something different, and then um, where they're going to be confronted with issues from other members here. So. Helene, what's your sense on this? I, I feel that they can apply for a special permit, but again, if you're, and I agree, there's three different lawyers here and they might have three different opinions, maybe we can run it by town council just, just to be on, on the I think the we have run this by them before, something this similar one? to this. Not this one specifically, no, but situations like this. And um, I don't remember what their, what their determination was because I, I still haven't moved away from how I feel about this based on my legal experience. I mean, I don't have an issue with the special permit, personally, but I uh, Neither do I. Do you, do you understand I, I, the issue, Attorney Newman? Yeah, I do, and I'm, I'm leaning towards special permit for the extension of the use uh, and, and, the, the and, and the setbacks. It would be a variance on the setbacks. It would be a variance on the setbacks. A variance on the setbacks. Yeah. This board needs to remember, Mr. Chair, that at the end of the day, regardless I know I'm the former commissioner and the new commissioner is in place, at the end of the day, your decision is what sticks. So the, the, the permit could not be denied or, or prolonged for any reason. Once this board, you're the jurisdiction. Once your decision is made, then that's locked in. And the half permit, a building permit has to be issued based upon the decision of this board okay. by law. But I also want to make sure that if, we, if we're going to uh, I'll take the position that we feel that it should be by special permit, that we have consistency, right? We're, we're, we're not setting precedent here, but that we're consistent in our interpretation of this. And I think that also will be a, uh, useful. Our building inspector is new, and he doesn't know basically the pulse of this board and what this board sort of has uh, more sensitivities or proclivities to, right? So they, uh, I think from, from seeing that at least two of the voting members, I'm gonna ask Attorney Faria, the, the issue, do you understand the issue that we, we've got here? I can provide clarification. Because I'm not sure if you're familiar, you must be familiar with the site. You've been around. I'm very familiar with the site. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, I, I agree with Mr. Braga, and uh, my only concern would be is that this has been advertised for a change of, uh, change of use. Is that correct? It is correct. So I, I, I think that may be problematic, because can we now say we're going to give a special permit where it hasn't been advertised? No, can't do so it appear, it, it, to me, I, I know the location very well, and Actually, I, when I was 16 years old, it used to be a driving school, I believe, with a used car dealer, Mr. Rose, Nick Rose, I believe. That it's been there for many years. I just think that uh, uh, the other thing that bothers me about uh, saying a change of use, I don't think it's the Board of Appeals decision to make uh, uh, zoning decisions like that, a change of use, although we probably have a precedent, but that's more of a planning board or a town meeting purview to say, what's the use for that particular area, not that particular land. But I agree with Mr. Braga that uh, I think that this sh should go forward with just uh, 
a license by the Board of Selectmen for the, the car dealership, and they're expanding that use, which I think uh, I would be in favor of the expansion of that use. Clean, board, that, yeah, clean not, that area up. The board's not comfortable with the special permit. You still have the option of granting the variance for the not. dimension, right. for, the, for the setback issue, and you're well within your rights to do that also. And the Zoning Board of Appeals also, per 40A, is allowed to make modifications as you see fit during hearings. That is well within your authority to do that. In any situation, you would be setting a precedent. If you're not comfortable with the special permit, then I would suggest that the board go the variance for the setbacks and let the planning board take care of the, the parking. And all you would be responsible for is that setback issue per variance. Thank you. So as you all know, it's a public meeting. I'm gonna give, provide an opportunity to anyone in the audience to get a sense before I ask council some questions. Um, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in either in favor or in opposition to this petition? I can report to the viewers at home that we have about 20 people here and uh, no one's raised their hand or signaled that they would like to provide any comment either in favor or in opposition. So now, council, how would you like to proceed? I'm of the mindset that I'd rather not grant a variance if I don't have to, especially a use variance, because that is quite, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, a, it's a request, not to say that it wouldn't be granted in this context, but I, how, do you, how would you like to proceed? And we're willing to, to entertain whatever your position would be, I would leave. Well, uh, part of me is thinking that um, maybe we need to continue the matter because maybe town council needs to weigh in on this. Uh, you've raised a bunch of issues as to whether or not we even need a use variance and, um, or maybe it's just a special permit. Um, You're gonna need a variance for the setback for requirement the setbacks. for the parking for the lot lines. Uh, and we can understand this is a unique parcel. It's very yeah, narrow. Yeah. You've got some restrictions with topography and whatever else, and also wetlands. Yeah. So we've got those concerns. Um, I think that there are a lot of uh, variables here that you know get you too close to, to an approval. So you've also asked for kind of a detailed breakdown. That on I'm going to need before we would go forward. We're yeah. definitely going to continue the matter. Yeah. That I know. Yeah. So, so when, and, and we can get you that itemized point by point list really fairly quickly. Um, well, I'm also coming to learn that many, some of those are not before us. Some of them are right. before the planning board, so you don't need that relief. Right. Maybe only be one or two. Right. And that's probably one of the reasons why I was uh, not understanding some of the some of the requests. Yeah. So, um, David Rosenberg, do you have something you'd like to add to this? D uh, David, you need to stand up if you want to say anything. So, so David is the uh, president of the uh, petition. Good evening, I'm, I'm Dave Rosenberg. I represent PRM Realty and, and uh, hopefully someday we'll be um, Audi and Volkswagen of Dartmouth. So um, my question is we've been working on this plan for quite some time. I, I think, um, Michelle. yeah, no, I know, but I think Michelle's <laughs> probably tired of us meeting with her. But um, we've been working on this for a while. We thought we had canvassed everything and obviously there's a new building in, uh, commissioner or inspector in town who sees things differently than the prior um, building commissioner. Um, I just want to make sure that we don't run into the time constraints. If you send us back to a special permit um, for a special permit and all of a sudden, you know, we can't get heard for a few months and then that meeting gets continued and continued again, then we're outside of the purview of the, of, of, of the, uh, it expiring this year, and then we'll have to come back and see you anyway. Um, the, the current owners of the property, uh, some of the re representatives of the Rose family are here tonight, have been extremely patient with us, and I just don't want to exploit the kindness that they've shown in, in helping us to try and get this thing approved. The only question I would say is, what, what is now the quickest way, the most expedient way we can get this this uh, what we need through the through the town at this point. That's what I would ask. Well, either way, we don't feel that the it was appropriately advertised. Is that is that part of it here? Well, I think Mr. Well, Bullen and I will have a discussion about that. Okay, fair enough. But 
either way, you're going to have another date. And if you're going to, we're going to have to publish. We're going to have to publish if they're going to amend, if it's going to be a special permit. It's going to have to be republished. Yeah. So we're looking at the earliest. We're now what? We're pretty much in August. So we're looking at what? September for a date for them? Early September? Is that a sufficient time for the? I don't know the number of days for publication. Yeah. I know it's twice. It's two weeks. Yeah, we're going to make it for the 21st of August or the 1st no, of September. Yeah, I already kind of made that. Did that some of that? September 10th. September 10th. You would be back. Okay, and that would be for a special permit. Well, that's what your council, I, that's why I was trying right. to get your council. And I'll leave him, to, he doesn't have to make up his mind here today. He could decide that he wants to just have it as a, as, a, uh, as a variance and continue as a variance, or he can bring it forth as a special right. permit. But how are we continue as a variance if there's, there's a valid uh, license for this right now? Is that? That's the other thing, right? Well, there is, but it's pre-existing non-conforming. It's a pre-existing non-conforming use. use. So they're seeking a variance so that it's no longer pre-existing non-conforming. They're, they're, they're trying to rectify it, right, at another level. Well, I guess maybe that's why you're thinking about town council, mm -hmm. is whether or not they can even get a variance mm -hmm. given that they are allowed to conduct the use as, as they currently exist, even though it's not in compliance with zoning. Till the end of this year. Till the end of this year. So you're saying, it's, in essence, it may, not, it may be, um, it's, it's, it's not a valid issue because they have the right to conduct the, the use at this point in time. They could only come before us for a variance after January. I'm only thinking out loud. I'm yeah. not saying that this is the I, situation, I, but I guess that's what you're touching upon. I personally, I, and it's on the record, I don't have an issue with it, whether it's a special permit or a variance. We've given variances on that particular strip and it's an appropriate use. I don't have an issue with that. Uh, legally, we just have to find what's more appropriate at this time. But I think if you go the fastest and way is to get you protected for another two years is to file for a special permit. And then, you know, but you already have an existing non-conforming use. You're expanding the use because I'm sure your license now is not for 200, 300 cars, whatever. Well, it it's going to go from a class two license to a class one license, right? Okay. Yeah. Which allows for new, new So that's an expansion. Yeah. And also your building, it doesn't meet the setback. You need a variance on the setbacks. Well, know, it's an expansion there, but it's also an expansion on the building size, the de right. density, which we understand. Yeah, no, I mean that. I, listen, I agree with you. I'd much rather grant, to me, I'd rather grant a special permit rather than grant a variance on this. Can you I ask a question? Um, so uh, part of me is thinking that if we're here do the because of the advertisement for a variance, part of me is thinking, well, Maybe we act tonight on the variance for the uh, setbacks, but you told you asked earlier for some additional information, which I wouldn't be able to get to, to you until tomorrow, or the next day. But part of me is thinking, geez, maybe we act on the on the setbacks today, and then if you talk to town council about a special permit, whether or not it's needed, and it may or may not, well, it's probably going to be needed for the expansion of a. Not conforming mm -hmm. use. Yep. Mm -hmm. So well, if you want to continue it just for the uh, for the issue of the setback for the parking spaces and put it on for the next hearing date, and you give me that information, we could piecemeal it like that. But then you're going to be bringing back a petition for special permit anyway. Yeah. So I'd I'd probably rather just have one hearing. I'd one probably hearing. Just, yeah. Just I'd rather have just one hearing, combine it all, at, at, which would be I think uh, Michelle might have said early September. September 10th, and we're, we're mindful. We're mindful of the fact that things, September 11th? No, September 11th, I'm sorry. September 11th. And we're mindful of the time constraints here, so we'll work with you. Certainly, I think the architect wants to. Yeah, I just, I just have one question. Um, we'd be reapplying for the, the appropriate, either a special permit or a variance. You'd be doing, well, you'd be doing both. both. Right. It'd be a special permit for use, and it would be a variance for the setback for the parking. Right. And so, any other relief that you need. Yes. So, so now we have a town document that goes against that with the denial letter. Will this have to be updated as well, or is, is your word overriding well, the denial gonna, letter? You, you may resubmit your, your request. You're going to resubmit the request. Yeah. He may give you the same opinion that could be his oh, okay. opinion. That's fine, and we respect that because he, yep. he may have a difference of opinion, but our interpretation of what the, the bylaws, how they should be imposed, is that, to me, it should be a special permit. Okay, thank you very much. 
All right. So I think at this point, given that there is no one who has uh, any comments, uh, either in favor or in opposition, um, we'll entertain. Would you, would you like to request to continue this matter? Uh, yes, please. Uh, you want to continue or do you want to withdraw it without prejudice? Well, how about we do this? You just continue, continue it for now, and then depending on how this goes, you can always decide that you want to withdraw it and file a new one. Or file a new one and anyway. then come back and yeah. that same night, like they did withdraw tonight, this and one. withdraw this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's what yeah, I meant yeah. to say. Right. Right. So right. He's, he's not losing okay. time. No, I'm not saying withdraw it, you know, withdraw right. just before. Right. But I, I think I'd file uh, two separate applications, one for a variance and one for a special permit, right? Yes. So. It's okay. Um, it's going to get you where you need to be. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, it's uh, it's all good. I, I echo uh, David's comments. Uh, Mrs. Rose has been very, very, very patient, and uh, we'd like to move this along if possible. And we'll be mindful of that. Um, so at this point in time, gentlemen, do we uh, can we entertain a motion to continue this? So we'll continue it to September 11th, yep. and that give you plenty of time to amend whatever you need to. Well, it's yep. going to be filing. Well, new filings. refund. New yeah. filings. All right, I'll entertain a motion, gentlemen. Uh, at the request of the petitioner, uh, I make a motion that we uh, continue this matter to September 11th. ZAB 24-10. Oh, right. ZAB 24-10. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank all right. you all. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Moving on to the last matter that's on for tonight's meeting, it's Special Permit ZSP 24-10. The petitioner is Timothy Bashan. Owner is Jamie Marujo. Yeah. The subject prop. Excuse me, folks. Stop. Hearing going on. Session. The subject property is located at 47 Spring Street, also known as Map 165, Lot 62. The property is located in the general residence and aquifer zone three district. It was legally advertised on July 4th and July 11th of this year. I make a motion that we waive the reading of the abutters list. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. <coughs> Petitioner is seeking a special permit Proposed garage addition for lot coverage from 7.5% to 15.7%. All right, let me see if I can read the denial letter on this. All right, the letter is addressed to Timothy Bashand, and it's regarding 47 Spring Street, and it's dated May 31st of 2024. I've reviewed your application, and at this time, your proposal cannot be approved due to non-compliance with current zoning regulations. Proposed garage addition changes lot coverage from 7.5 to 15.7%. For zoning bylaw, special permit is required. Your application is being denied under the following sections of the Dartmouth Zoning Bylaw, 375-28.5 prohibited uses. A lot coverage above 10% or lot coverage above 2,500 square feet of any lot, whichever is greater. The subject property is located in the general residence mm -hmm. offer for zone three district. And, and that's it for that letter. Let's see what else we got here. Where's the comments? Any other comments on this one? No. Oh, I have it here. This, this is from the Board of Health. This overall Morton Park subdivision where this property resides has, pro has poorly draining soils and very high groundwater. The subsurface drainage system shown is of a depth where groundwater is expected to be encountered. Additionally, we know that impervious area contributes the largest of two equal loads of nitrogen to this watershed that discharges to the Slocum River. Oh, An estuary that is designated as impaired by the EPA for excess nitrogen limits. Mm -hmm. An above ground bioretention facility for roof runoff is preferred since that style of drainage design, when properly designed and maintained, can reduce nitrogen. Subsurface structures do not treat for nutrients such as nitrogen. 
If the application is considered, it should be upon a recharge design that is best suited to the soils. Failure to consider the above concerns is highly, excuse me, is likely to result in a system that will not function as intended. Next, conservation. A review of the GIS mapping does not indicate any wetlands within 100 feet of the, of the site. These maps are not specifically accurate to the ground conditions. The rear wooded portion of this lot may support an isolated condition. It would be prudent for the applicant to apply to have conservation staff conduct a wetland A1 assessment mm -hmm. to be sure. There is not enough to put, his, to put this on hold, but this area does support wetlands, streams, and a high water table throughout, and being certain is always best. Mr. Mark Garrett. Mm -hmm. DPW. Compliance with the following DPW regulations, rules, and specifications will be required, but not limited to the Department of Public Works construction and specification design standard details, general bylaw 313, stormwater management, stormwater management regulations, rules and regulations for the installation connection of building sewers for the use of public sewers, and site plans shall so show all existing utilities. All right, so at this time, I'm going to call upon the petitioner or their representative. I see Mr. Fallon here. I believe he's his representative <coughs> yes. for this case. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Christian Fallon, principal engineer and president of Fallon Corp, here tonight representing the owner who's also here, Jamie Marujo. Um, as you mentioned, we are here tonight seeking the board's approval for lot coverage from 15.7% to, um, in lieu of the max, 10%. Um, for that site, as far as square footage, area goes, we're looking at approximately 1,719 square feet over, over the, the limit. The site is located at 47 Spring Street, which contains approximately 28,800 square feet. The applicant is looking to construct a 1,176 square foot um, addition off, off the current house along with the necessary impervious area to access the garage. Um, we will be proposing a recharge system for the proposed addition and also the um, existing dwelling, which will certainly meet uh, the DPW's um, requirements. We did do soil testing out there already. As we know, this would be a requirement for the DPW. Um, groundwater is indeed high at two and a half feet. Um, so we will have to meet their um, requirements as well. Certainly, I will take into account conservation's uh, comments in regards to doing a bioretention, you know, rain garden versus um, a subsurface recharge system. Um, this, this parcel um, and, you know, a lot of the surrounding parcels in this area are certainly a, a lot smaller than this. This was actually a double lot. Um, so, an instance for each lot, you could have 2,500 square feet per lot, and if, if you just take a look at that, we would actually meet the requirement because in total we're at roughly um, 4,900 um, square feet. Um, so certainly it's in uniform with the surrounding um, area. The Board of Appeals, as you may know, uh, may grant such special permit provided they find the proposed use is in harmony with the purposes of this bylaw um, is appropriate to the natural topography, soils, and characteristics of the site, will not during construction or thereafter create an adverse environmental impact on the aquifer zone in the town, um, will not adversely affect an existing or potential town water supply and is inconsistent with the town's bylaw, is consistent with the existing future development in accordance with the underlying zoning. Um, as an engineer, I feel we meet all that criteria. Um, again, we're talking about 1,176 square feet over the, the required um, max, max amount of impervious lot coverage. And as I stated, if you did consider this as two lots, which it, which it was, we would still be under the 2,500 square foot per, per lot. Um, 
considering that and then the improvements that we're going to be doing with the recharge, at the end of the day, I think this is going to be an improvement, um, not only to the aquifer zone, but to the abutting residents. We feel it would, ha having this addition um, certainly has negligible impacts in regards to stormwater runoff um, and certainly will not have any effects, um, negative effects to their property value. Um, that's all I have right now. I'll be certainly glad to answer any questions the board or abutters may have. Thank you. Certainly. Um, I have some questions, but I want to defer the questions for now. I'm going to let some of my members, but before, actually, one other thing I need to do is I was, I should have read this into the record. This was actually an email that we received. But, um, uh, do we have the floor plans, Mr. Chair? This came from my building inspector and it yeah, was addressed to our oh. clerk. Maybe, yeah. So I just want to read this into the record. Sure. This is another concern. Um, please notify, and, and I sort of picked up on this, but I just was, wasn't sure and I was going to ask you today. Please notify the ZBA that the application for the special permit, ZSP 24-10, does not mention the accessory apartment that is presented with the floor plans. The accessory apartment is in violation of the zoning bylaws for the general residence district. Specifically, 375-10.2 EC is located within or attached by a conditioned space to a single family residence in such a manner so as to maintain the appearance of a single family residence. But it contains it can't contain not more than 800 square feet of habitable gross floor area and has not more than two bedrooms. The special permit application is only requesting adding garage, which pushes them over the lot coverage limits in the aquifer zone three district. Please let me know if you have any questions. And it was signed by Randy Bassett, who is our uh, zoning enforcement officer. So you indicated, I think based on your um, it's a garage. That it has a total of 1,000, I think 100 square feet, 100 and some odd square feet. So if you are going to ask for more than 800, anything that's more no, than no, 800. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's the per footprint, 1176. So times two, that's 2352. 2352. If, you, if you're taking the second floor, correct? That's 1172 per. That's the footprint. Per footprint, right? Correct. Okay. So the garage is 11762 on the second floor. I'm, I just looked at the, I, I didn't well, have I guess we could look before. at it where the garage is just the garage and the, the other area is actually uh, exceeds the 800 square feet. So that's going to require a, a variance. A uh, request for a variance if that's what they want to do. So let's continue. How are you? My name is Jamie Marujo. I'm the owner of the property. So. Um, when we met with uh, the previous building inspector, um, it was told to my builder that we were allowed, based on the square footage, which I was led to believe it was 1,000. So we can certainly address that if it's 880. But also, too, that that area is approved for duplexes, which is, which is technically what that is. But the thing is, you're coming before us for lot coverage. For lot coverage, one, which we we're prepared to, to vote on that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, and you would be granted that. But I think you're going to have a problem with this building inspector to be able to build this because it exceeds. They're going to he's going to request that you get a variance. Okay. We, we can't approve what's shown on the floor layouts yep. with this application because this application is for lot coverage. So what we can do, we can do one of two things. Um, and I don't know how I feel about piecemealing it because the plans that we have are not in conformance. So actually, I'm going to take that off the table. I'm not, I don't feel comfortable actually moving forward just on this. We're willing to allow you to continue tonight's hearing. You file a request for a variance if you're looking to do that, or you can just present plans that bring you into compliance. But I will say this, we've had some difficulty with people wanting to put large size uh, residential units uh, attached to their homes, and I don't know if we've been granting them. Uh, we've not felt comfortable. Um, but obviously we look at these on a case-by-case -case basis, 
and we will, you know, if you want, if you need a variance and you're asking for it, we'll consider it. But I know that there was one for someone on Allen Street. Allen, right. right. And we, and I drove by the other day, they're under construction, but it's part, it looks like part of the house. Oh, yes. So, yeah, so. And they actually reduced the size. I so, don't know what it is. So, yeah. the, the, the situation is one in which I don't feel comfortable trying to approve your special permit when we're relying on plans that are already submitted that exceed what you're allowed to do. So if you're gonna come back just on a special permit issue and you wanna reduce the size of the, of the structure so you will be in conformance that you won't need a variance, that's fine, we can continue it, you amend the plans and we'll consider it, or request a variance with what you're asking for in conjunction with and we'll mark it for the same date of the special permit. Maybe that was if a convoluted I'm, if way. I may Mr. Chairman, can, was that an email that was just sent directly to the board, or yeah, can, we get, a, can we get a copy of that? What's the of course, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, it was July 23rd, Tuesday, which was yesterday. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, it would be great if we can get a copy of that. Ab um, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so if... Right there. <laughs> She's yeah. giving it to him. <laughs> Thank you. So, so if, the, if, the, if we keep the living space to 800 square feet, the accessory apartment, then, then we wouldn't need, we would be in conformance. You need a variance, you would only need the special permit. Now, I have a couple of issues with that that I'd just like to raise. One of the things is, and I'm not, I'm not familiar with this, but we've got the Board of Health having some concerns that given that there's a high water table, that the typical structures that they use that are in ground for water recharge will not work well. Um, and they're suggesting an above ground bioretention facility for roof runoff is preferred since that style of they drainage do that. design, that's, that's when no suddenly designed and maintained, can reduce nitrogen. Yeah, we have no problem with that. That's something we can easily, right. easily do. I'm not familiar There's with plenty that. of room on, on the your, site. What's your groundwater from? Two and a half so feet from. And a half we did the test bit already, so, oh, okay. so we would. Yeah, we're, filling, we're filling the area there a little bit anyway. Right, but you need some separation, even yeah. if you go with the shallow infiltrators. So I think open system will be fine. So they, they can meet that requirement. I'm not concerned about okay, that. Okay, we can make that a but condition. But we're not acting. We're, I think we're, you know, if we're... We need to know what we're acting on. Well, I don't feel comfortable acting on this when we have plans submitted to us. Right. That no, I agree. That, okay. that's what I'm saying, so. it, it makes sense to, I know there's some abutters here that, you know, from, spent I'm time out. I would like to hear from them. And if they got concerns, maybe we could address, address, that too. address any other issues when we come back. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, uh, given that this is a public hearing and we allow people to provide and put forth public comment, I'm going to ask if there's anyone either in opposition or in support of this petition to come forward, identify yourself by stating your name and your address and setting forth your concerns. So you can raise your hand and we'll ask you to come up. Come on up. Hello, thank you for giving me the opportunity <clears throat> to be here tonight. My name is Denise Bunnell. I live at 87 Morton Ave. I reside across the street from the property. Okay. Um, my concern is the size of the garage and then the site, the plans that I did look at has the apartment on the top and that wasn't mm -hmm. in what was gonna be done today, the way you said. Um, my other thing is um, the applicant, should he be residing at 47 Spring Street to be able to put a garage there? That's not a requirement. That's not a requirement? Not a requirement. Okay. Thank you. you. Want to continue if there's anything else you would like to ask. No, I, I'm all set. Well, yeah, there is. Okay. The driveway entrance. Yes. At the beginning of it, it looks entirely different than the rest of it. What is that? I'm not sure what you're trying to get at with regard oh, to the, the construction entrance. What, what do you mean by, is that what it, that is, that's the, the construction the, entrance? Not yeah. the construction entrance, the driveway <coughs> entrance to getting into the garage. Well, I, this is, I think it's the same one. I think it's while they're building the garage, the DPW requires that they build it of a certain width 
and with certain type material so that there isn't like mud tracking from the site onto the street. It has to be of a stone type composite, if you will, where it drains properly. Okay. It's a requirement they've imposed uh, for some time now on contractors or people that are gonna build. And what you see there, it looks like rocks on their plan. I believe that that's what that is. That's, that's the temporary. What that's now, for. how it's going to end up at the end, I don't know if they're going to use uh, gravel, asphalt, concrete, pavers. I don't know. And that's really not exactly within our purview. But I think that's what that's trying to depict there. It's the proposed construction entrance. That's what that, and it says it's 12 feet wide by 24 feet long. They want of a certain length to ensure that any vehicle that goes onto the site while construction is going on, when it exits the site, it doesn't drag along with it and bring it along its wheels. It has an opportunity for that to fall off before it goes along the roadway, which I think makes sense, right? It preserves the, the, the roads right. and streets from debris and, <clears throat> and, and soils and dirt and sand and whatever it may be. Okay, my other concern is um, on the site plan, it has the limit of clearing Okay, so limit of clearing? Yes. I don't see that. Do you see that, Helene? The, the, the line with the... With the, the swirly sun. line going up. It goes all the way up, then it goes across the backyard. Okay, yes. Limit of it clearing. goes I all the way that. down Martin Ave and all the way down Fenton Street to the end of the property. Well, it doesn't go all the way down Morton Avenue, I don't believe. Yes, it does. If you look at it good, it's there. Oh, that's the existing clearing, I believe. Is that the edge of the All the wooded area. Right. Rather than guessing, okay. what we're going to do I, I is we're going to call upon the petitioner's engineer, and they'll explain mm -hmm. that to us, okay, in a little bit. Okay. Is there anything else? No. All right, just so, I, did I answer your question satisfactorily with regard to the, uh, the driveway? Yes. Good. So the only thing I need to ask the engineer when, he, when I ask him to come clearing. back up is the limit of clearing. Yes. All right. But I'm going to ask other people to come forward now if they have any questions, but we'll, remember, we'll try to remember that. Is there anyone else that'd like to come up and speak, either in favor or in opposition, or with just concerns yes. about this project? My name is Andrew Lafferty. I live at 42 Spring Street, across from the house. My concern is there's a lift being put in the garage. Excuse me? A lift being put in the garage. Okay. Why? A lip? Not loan business. I understand that. Oh, lift. A lift. I think it's like a car lift. I didn't. I looked through this. I just happened to notice that. It, did, did you see a plan with that depicted yes, on it? Yes, I do. All right. So I will also ask the engineer about that. Anything else, sir? No. I'm concerned about the. Being, becoming a business. Well, I understand that. Well, obviously, this is not zoned for business, so if there, anything were to happen um, at any point in time where they were conducting a business there, obviously that's what the zoning enforcement officer is, is for. That's what he enforces to ensure that they're not small businesses that are not in compliance with the uh, small business bylaw, or home occupation bylaw, I should say, within zoning. And, um, but I will ask him that question. And Thank uh, you. second thing, on the apartment, I was heard that it was supposed to be a handicapped apartment a on the second Excuse handicap for handicap oh. and the second floor does not have an elevator or a ramp how would it be handicapped well, they're not asking for anything before us for a handicapped type of okay apartment. anything that's else what sir? I heard. anything else that's it thank you all right is there anyone else in the audience come on up Good afternoon, Charles Shestak, 42 Spring Street. Um, I want to say that I am opposing this permit. Uh, aside from the obvious visual nuisance that this would ha uh, uh, come to fruition, uh, it's also a quality of life issue as well. Um, you got to deal with noise. Okay, if this becomes a business, you're going to deal with trucks. Hold on a second. Sure. What's, the what's the zoning on this? It's general, general residence, residence, right? Huh? General residence. Right. It's not so, allowed. Okay, so I'm, I'm just so sure. I appreciate I like that. It, you can't be on supposition. Anyone can try to convert something illegally. Okay. We don't act on. Looking that. at the plans, 14 foot garage doors, 
lifts inside of the garage. Um, that's not for your normal vehicle to be well, stored. I don't know exactly which plans you're looking at. Yeah. I don't. Right here, Michael, it says. I don't see any lifts depicted on any of these plans that are presented to us. Yeah, well, do you have those plans? I don't have them with me, no. I came to, but all the way on the left-hand side, this is what they're talking about. there should be a rectangle. A six by eight area for a car lift. Right. So there's a notation. Sure? There's a notation. Take photos on my phone, um, so I could show that to you if you can't find them. This is 911. Nine feet, 11 inches, not 14. So you're referring as... I can't read that. Yeah. The lift. Well, it just, it's referring to, I don't see a lift. Of, okay, so what you're referring to, I got that now. Thank you. So it's on page two, and there's a notation that says, thick and slab in eight foot by eight foot area for a car lift, see manufacturer specifications. Mm -hmm. All right. So I know that the oh. first inference that can be drawn from that is going to be a, it's an automotive repair garage. I don't know what this gentleman plans on doing. Maybe he's a car enthusiast and he just wants to have his own vehicle that he wants to touch upon. Okay. Um, if he's going to conduct business there, obviously he's going to be confronted with some significant issues. That's all I can tell you. Now, I can't prohibit him from putting a lift, two lifts, or three lifts in there if he likes to have his cars where he can park one underneath the other. If that's what he sure. selects, to, if he chooses to do, mm -hmm. he's, well, he's well within his right to do that with, at, on his property. But I can understand that dots are, are attempted to be connected here. Um, if you're looking for a condition, it's already in the zoning bylaw, but the garages are not to be utilized for any type of automotive repair work, uh, for a business type automotive repair work. I'm sure that's something I could discuss with the, uh, with the uh, app. As long as that's written, uh, then that's... So that would uh, appease your concerns? It would, because right. I was concerned about noise nuisance, odor, because if it is gonna be an operational business, you got to deal with paint, you got to deal with potential oil spills, how are you going to clean all that up, how is that going to affect the property and the neighboring properties? Okay, there's well, a lot of potential. This. I'm just bringing my concerns that could happen if this is approved and then but a lot of things, things change a after. A lot of things could happen, right, that mm -hmm. have nothing to do with his use of the property. All I can say is this. The zoning does not allow that type of use of the property. Good. That's all I can, I, I can tell you that. And if there's ever a complaint made and it's brought before the building department and then there's an appeal brought before the ZBA, we would obviously handle that accordingly. Because that's why we have zoning bylaws, is to protect their neighbors mm -hmm. from someone who's using the property not in conformance with what the allowances are for that area. Sure. So okay. we most certainly would, uh, would have some strong uh, words for whoever that person may be if they were to do something like that. And I'm not saying that this gentleman would even do something like that or have even any, any intentions of doing that. But I'm sure they will address that. Okay. Is there anything else, sir? There is, there is. So the concern of the construction happening, um, it is a flood zone over there. All the neighboring properties have flood problems. So if they're gonna be building, and where's the runoff gonna go? Is it gonna go into the neighbors? Who knows? Um, there's a lot of information that needs to be figured out with that. Um, if it does become a business or become constantly used, I know it can't. I don't want to hear the, the word business. Okay. If okay. it becomes overly used, how late are they allowed to use that garage if it's going to become a nuisance to neighbors in terms of doing repair work and stuff like that? Um, that's a concern of mine as well. And then, you know, um, if this permit is allowed uh, and the building of the garage is permitted, then I do request that the Department of Public Health, um, the building inspector, and the conservation committee do become heavily involved. Uh, I grew up in this neighborhood. My mother lives there, my grandmother lives there. I got friends and family that are all, in, it's a quiet neighborhood. And I do not want this to be destroyed, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Either in favor or in opposition? Could I say one more thing? Come on up. Just to address the lighting coming off the garage, um, I don't want it to interfere with coming across the street and blinding us going up the street. Um, he has a tendency to overdo lighting situations. Okay. So I like to see that addressed. 
Well, we typically don't address lighting in non-commercial requests. This is a residence. That's not something we typically address. That's usually addressed with site plan review. Um, okay. As you well heard, this was a, the last, well, the first matter we had was with the fire department and the, the neighbor had a concern. That's a commercial type use. That's something okay. we would address. Otherwise, you can always complain to the building department mm -hmm. if someone is mm -hmm. lighting their property excessively and there's spillage onto your property. But from what I understand is you're across the street, right? Yes. So the likelihood that there would be spillage onto you, I think, would be somewhat limited. But nonetheless, that's something that you always have the building inspector to address in the future. You could have had, you could have had them address it up until now if they're, and how they currently use the property if there's excessive lighting that goes on there. But the word business here really uh, doesn't have any place. I can understand that this has been mentioned and it, I'm, I'm, we're gonna address that with them, but this is not a business, it's not zoned for business, and he cannot conduct the business there legally. Now, okay. it doesn't mean that somebody at some point, in any, in any neighborhood, someone can start to use their garage for business purposes, but that's what the zoning bylaws, that's why they exist, and that's why we have a building inspector, that's why he's called the chief zoning enforcement officer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want anybody conducting an operation next to my home, right? I would, nev I would not want that, especially given that I live in a residential area. All right, is there any anyone else before I bring the petitioner back so that he can address some of these concerns? Right, there not being anyone at this point in time. I'll give you another opportunity after they have, they, they uh, provide some clarification on this. So, the first thing is the, um, I guess the recharge system, we have an engineer here who feels that they can adequately provide and reduce any impact that we'll have uh, with this type of, uh, there's a specific name for it, which I'm not familiar with. The other one is the limit of clearing. Can you show me on this plan um, the limit of clearing, if you could sort of sketch it out on there so we can get a sense. Yeah, so currently the, the, the limit of clearing is actually the existing limit of clearing right now. So the limit of clearing, as you can see, we're keeping all this work within that limit. So currently we're not proposed to, to go any further than what's currently. So whatever's cleared is going, to maintain, is going to be maintained the same. Exactly. Okay. Correct. Um, all right, so that addresses that. Now, it's what about the situation? Obviously, people are um, concerned, and I can understand, and, yep. that there's, although there's, there's no lift per se that's drawn out or displayed on this, but there is a note that says a thickened slab in eight feet by eight feet, eight foot by eight foot area for a car lift, see manufacturer specifications. Can you explain that to us? Sure, Mr. Chairman. And for the record, I also have a lift in my home as well. Um, Usually when you put in a lift, it's because you, you have a few vehicles. And in this case, we're certainly trying to keep the footprint as small as possible. So the applicant um, has a lift because it's for a smaller vehicle, such as a, a Porsche, a small convertible. So that vehicle would go on that lift and go up, and it will allow you to have another vehicle underneath it. Certainly, by no means, this will not be a business. This will not be a location where the owner is doing any work on his vehicles. Um, he's here today and can certainly attest, um, and I know him as well. I don't think he would change the oil on any of his vehicles. Um, certainly, he would be taking that to an automobile location. Um, so in, in regards to the lift, it's, it's, it's mainly for um, the storage of, of vehicles. Um, and as I stated, this will not be a business. This will not, you know, by any means um, be a business. In regards to his brother, um, and, and mentioned that, you know ADA access to the to the accessory unit. I don't know what his, that was about. I was going to ask you about that. His, where, where his, was that was that referenced anywhere in here that it's an ADA uh, accessory do you wanna, unit? Do you want to mention your your brother's situation? No, I, I have a mentally disabled uh, brother-in-law, which is sort of why the apartment is going to exist because he has a caretaker, um, and the thought is with elderly parents like my in-laws who reside at the property. I think it's important to note too that I, I live on Fenton Street, two houses away from where this is. So, you know, to put the abutters, um, some of their sort of concerns at ease. I mean, I live there. I have zero intention of having a business there. This is really to help my family 
long term to have to care for him. And um, our hope is that he would never have to go into a home. So if we could actually get the approval to build this, we would bring his caretaker, she would reside there above the garages, and then his parents are there where he resides as well. Okay. So he's uh, 53 years old, so. All right. Thank you. So I think any other thing was the business and repair use that's already been addressed. So those are the four issues. And certainly, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the square footage as mentioned. We just received this letter. Um, we'll continue. I think we should continue it. Absolutely. But before we do that, I'm going to give anyone, everyone an opportunity if there's something else they'd like to ask or any, anything that you've addressed. But we'll sure. just continue and then that way you can decide how you want to handle it, okay? Thank you. All right. So what would be the next available date? My name is Carol Marsden. I live on Fenton Street. Um, my question is, what is going to be the change in elevation? You said you're raising the garage. How high? If I may, you can come forward. Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the slab... Um, Do you have profiles here? Yeah, well, we have elevations on the plan. So this is elevation 98 here. This is elevation 97, okay. these contours. Yep. So we're proposing this lab at 97, which is a little bit of cut and fill between, it's a balance of cut and fill between 98 and then the bottom over here is at 96. So we, we proposed it to minimize the amount of fill, which obviously minimizes the, you know, so increase is, in purpose. Is, is Excuse me, ma'am, you, you have to ask the oh, question so we can hear it. Is the New proposed foundation going to be the same as the existing foundation on the house it's attaching to? It's probably going to be a foot lower. It's going to be lower than the attached house? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is a slab. So it's, it's no basement. It's just a four-foot foundation. Okay. I'm just concerned about yeah. runoff. Uh -huh. Because living on Fenton, probably from Cross Road all the way down to Morton Ave, almost every one of those houses Backyards flood. We, we, we're well aware of that. There have been a lot of concerns. Um, there was another project on Fenton Street that came before us for an eight unit apartment building. There were a lot of concerns from neighbors of that as well. Right. But one of the things I've come to learn, not only from being on this board, but from working with engineers, is they find ways to actually improve the situation because now you have runoff that was otherwise would have been on the ground, now goes onto a roof, into a gutter, mm -hmm. into a pipe, mm -hmm. and then it goes and dissipates over time, me, which actually improves the situation. I, I understand that. My husband and I put a lot of money into the ground per request of the town yes. to keep the runoff down. And it, you know it's helped our property, but I know we still get surface. I mean, when you walk through the yards, just walking in this much water all the way down. So with this blocking a little more, that, that's just my concern. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? Can I just address her comments? Okay, sure, one, just one second. We'll, we'll let him come forward. Um, Mr. Marujo, is yeah. that the name? Yeah, yeah. You can are you gonna address thank your comments? You. So uh, I did just wanna point out, so I live at the bottom of Fenton Street, so I know all about water over there. And um, you know, I've I've spent a fortune just like you have on that same subject. So, um, you know, that's entirely why I got Christian Fallon involved because of all the water. You know, that current property that's on Spring Street, we get water in the basement pretty regularly. So, the nice thing about this is by doing the addition, I'm gonna have to solve that problem as well. So, because that's a major concern for me as well. So, so I'm in the same boat. All right, there's a gentleman who raised his hand. Come on up, sir. So please identify yourself, name and address. Hi, my name is Ray Medeiros. I live on 73 Morton Avenue. And I just have a question. What, can you explain, what is a recharge system? Great question. I understand it peripherally, but this gentleman yeah, here. Yeah, I can't okay. hear it. I'm sorry. I understand it peripherally. All right, well, first let's start with this. Your last name is Medeiros, right? You said Medeiros is your right. last name? Right. Madeiros. Madeiros, okay. Well, I'm a Madeiros too, but we're not related, right? Because I don't want to have to recuse myself. <laughs> we're not related, correct? This is the first time I've ever met. I'm this is sorry. the first time I've ever met you. We're not related, correct? No, we're not related. We're related. At least not that we so. know. Of. Yeah, at least not that we know. Of. Maybe, all right. maybe we all are. Actually. I just want to make sure we put that on the record. Now, um, this gentleman here, he's a professional engineer, so he could describe and explain to you what he understands a recharge system to consist of. So, for a recharge system. 
normally with the runoff when you have an impervious areas, let's say concrete, asphalt, all that stuff, it's impervious. It means when it rains, this stuff doesn't go into the soil. It sheet flows depending on the grade, right? And it goes somewhere. Normally on the streets, you will have catch basins that gets collected to somewhere, a low spot, either maybe a river or, or a stream or, you know. In this case, a recharge system would take the runoff from the roof and the, it goes into the gutter in the, in the downspout to a galleys underground that have crushed stone around it and relies on the soils to infiltrate. Now, the, the problem with this site, you have a high groundwater table. So you can't really, it's already underwater, so you can't put your system in the ground because the groundwater is two and a half feet, I believe, because you would have to have some separation. Now, depends on the soil. If you have a good soil, let's say you have uh, a sandy soil, it infiltrates faster. Mm -hmm. So if you have lousy soil, if it's loamy soil, it would take a longer time, so it would have, you would need a larger system. Mm -hmm. In this case, I don't think they're gonna rely on a recharge system. They have room in the back where they can create like a shallow, maybe uh, retention, retention area. Retention yeah, I would, yes. Purposes? Well, because they need to have some separation from the groundwater and that could be their storage volume. And again, that could work because this could be the, the, the preferred way over the, because you have a high groundwater table. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. because once we have a ret retention basin, detention basin, whatever, we have a mosquito farm. We don't want that but, in no, the middle I, of our Right, but I think they talk about bio, uh, you know, they, we can have some vegetation that can, like wetland vegetation that can help with absorbing some of the water and all that, you know, so. Two feet of crushed stone, all around, I think we'll leave it up to the engineer how he, he's gonna design, but by, by law, with the zoning bylaws, they cannot shed their runoff to your property. So if, if this happens, you can actually go to the, and if we approve this project, it's gonna be a condition that they won't cause any flooding or shedding of runoff to adjacent property, so you won't have any of his runoff. He has to take care of it on his on the site. That, that would be a condition. Yes. All right. Can I have one more? Come on up. Um, the apartment on top, is it correct that it's for the caretaker to live there? Well, first of all, the way it's been designed right now, um, it's not before us. It wouldn't be allowed. So they'd have to come back unless they're either going to seek a variance or they're going to minimize the size so that they would, would not require a variance and they would only get the special permit for the infiltration. Okay, and at that time we'd get another notice to come for that? If they were to file for a variance, yes. We're gonna to continue tonight's hearing. Okay. So there'll be another date in which you folks would be able to attend and if you have some new, I just ask that you just raise new concerns because although we, we do suffer from some memory loss, we do remember the, <laughs> the gist of what goes on here. Um, but if you have some concerns then, you can raise them. But I think we've sort of addressed a lot of these. And I think the biggest one was, and I understand when you see little notations on plans, mm -hmm. then you know, yes. people get concerned. And there isn't gonna be a business, and if there is, that will be taken care of. Okay, thank okay? you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just for a point of information, I, uh, some of the comments that I heard there, uh, I just had a question to the board here is that if we grant a variant or grant any relief here and there's no stipulation that I know of that we would say that uh, a caretaker has to live there. No. We're uh, the fact that somebody said the caretaker, uh, we're not going to be bound by that if, uh, if we approve the apartment. Uh, nobody's going to go there and police to see who's, whether the caretaker there or three wild and crazy guys. I mean. Uh, <laughs> considering putting in a restriction on that. We don't micromanage these situations. So. I, I understand that. I just wanted to point that out for the people yeah. in the audience that uh, they mentioned that 
we're not approving this for a caretaker in any event, we're approving the physical apartment if we did down the road. And that's why we're extremely cautious and about granting variances for anyone, mm -hmm. because in essence, we look at it as if, as if it's a two family home on a, for a single family potential zoned area, such, such as single residence A and single residence B. But this is in the general residence area. Correct, and just for clarification for the neighbors, within that zone, you are allowed by, as of right, to construct a bylaw apartment, but it has to be certain size, square footage, and it has to be designed a certain way. So if they meet that, they don't have to, they don't have to come in front of the board for that, for, this, for the apartment. They're here because they're increasing the lot coverage over the 10% that it's allowed. You understand? So, but we understand what the concerns are, and I mean, I personally been on this board for over 15 years, and I've seen it before, and I know what the concerns. And if this was granted, we're going to make sure that we have notes that they won't cause any flooding or any undue uh, uh, flooding to to adjacent properties. You know, so well, not we're, that, we're not, they need to get approval from the DPW. The do, DPW will provide have calculations absolutely. to make a determination that the amount of water that comes from a rainstorm would be accommodated Probably, on that property. Yeah. There are some safeguards in place, right? We're not a bad town. We're a pretty good town. There are safeguards in place. All right, so moving on. Um, at this point in time, I would entertain a motion. Well, are you, what's the next available date? And let's see, well, first of all, when is the next available date? Let's start with that. September 11th. Are you going to have enough time between now and September 11th to make the oh, determinations yeah. and amendments that you need to make? If anything, I'll leave it upon you. Yes. All right, September 11th. So I'll entertain a motion that the petition is requesting a continuance. I make a motion that we continue special permit ZSP-24-10 at the request of the petitioner to September 11th, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. You have a nice night. Thanks. Um, Moving on to the administrative portion of tonight's meeting, we have a review and approval of administrative minutes of July 10, 2024. Any comments? I have no comments, Mr. Chair. I have no comments. I have no comments. I'll entertain uh, a motion. Make a motion that we approve the administrative minutes of July 10, 2024. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. Review and approval of minutes of June 26, 2024 for variant ZSP 24-7. Tuck. 1402 Tucker Road. I have no comments, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, my only comment is that that's the uh, reference right. that you read from the uh, conservation, was it conservation? Yeah, the Board of Health. The Board, Board of Health. Board of Health. Board of Health. Yeah, Board they, of were health. Too, they were too close right. to the watershed area. Cut and paste. Yes. 1402 <laughs> Tucker Road. 1402 Tucker Road. I second that motion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. Review and approval of minutes of July 10, 2024, special permit ZSP 24-6, 254 C Potomska Road. No comments, Mr. Chair. No comments, Mr. Chair. Gentlemen down there, you have any comments? None. None. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that we approve the minutes of July 10, 2024, for special permit ZSP 24-6, 254-C Potomska Road. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Review and approval of minutes of July 10, 2024, use variant CAV 24-8-004 River Road. I have no comments on that. No comments. I have no comments. Gentlemen? None. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of July 10, 2024, for use variant ZAV 24-8-0 Old Fall River Road. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Is there any additional business that we need to discuss, gentlemen? No, Mr. Chair. If there is Make. not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second that motion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. We've adjourned.